You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. And in the house tonight, got the ever present DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, man. Everything going on, man. We got uh, we got these Saints, man. We talk all over the place, man. Everything going on. We got positions all over the field. We're trying to figure out what's going on. That's right, man. We got a very interesting show for you people out there. All you lovely Saints fans out there that have been following along. We're gonna cover the Saints OTA, uh, OTA week number two. Part two, I guess you could say, in this episode one nine to the seven of the sports coma, we're gonna be covering the OTAs. And we got a lot of questions that need some answering. And of course, of course, in our own particular sports coma way, we're gonna bring it to you in today's podcast. And uh, we're gonna start it off, DC, uh, by talking about uh, Mike Thomas. Man, you know we deal with the Mike Thomas. First, let's get, let's get into the rundown. Let me give y'all a list of the topics we're gonna deal with today. Brought to you by the good folks at ThePoshLifestyle.com. That's www.ThePoshLifestyle, like spell with a Y, L-Y-F-E, style.com. You can go there and get you organic supplements, water filters, EMF protection, sun guns for protection, all this kind of stuff. They're constantly adding new products. All kind of music, downloadable music is there as well for 99 cents. Uh, you can download entire uh, albums and stuff like that. All that uh, heirloom seeds to grow gardens. If you live in an apartment, you want to eat organic and eat organic seeds that's not genetically modified. They offer that for people in apartment settings, in the house settings. So there's no reason why you can't have clean water or healthy food to eat. All affordable, all available at thepostlifestyle.com. Remember, not just the website, it's the lifestyle. And of course, when you put the sports coma in at the coupon section, you get 10% off on your final purchase. That's our little gift to you to give uh, to you for supporting us here at the Sports Coma on the PRO Media Network. Now, getting into the rundown, we got a lot of stuff going on in OTAs Part 2. Mike Thomas showing up big time. He had a little battle with Marshawn Lattimore, the defensive rookie of the year uh, for the Saints last year against Mike Thomas. And Mike Thomas is turning it out to be a fantastic. Well, we already knew he was going to be great. Yeah, he turned it, he turned it out, right? <laughs> He turned it up, he's turning it out, turning it up, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right, he, 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 I call, I just say next level, man. The guy is next level. He trains like next level. I mean, he trains to be the best that ever he's did. He's already and probably the strongest receiver in the league already, man. And how many it's years like, have you been in the league? been in the league two years, man. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you know, so like, man, the sky's the limit for that guy. I mean, matter of fact, I ain't going to even say sky's the limit. Uh, the moon or uh, 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 space is the limit. Like, he... You go out of this world, man. He right on. He right on the edge of going out of this world. What you say? Well, I say well. He, if it's about him, what, wait, hold on. What, what you said, man? You said something. Don't let, don't, the, let, don't, let, don't, let don't let the flat. Don't let the feather just say you said. You oh, all right. what, what the, 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 the dome is the dome is the limit then. Okay, Elvin Kamara, we're going to talk about Elvin Kamara too. How he looking, OTAs, man. He looked fantastic. Looks a little heavier, man, than usual, and bulked up a little bit. I, he doesn't lose head loss speed, but look, looks really good out there. Elvin Kamara, we're going to talk about that. Also, we got other topics we're going to talk about. Bo Scott, Boston Scott, as most people know him, the uh, draft pick out of uh, Louisiana Tech, young running back. His role will break down his role in the same system. We'll also talk about Patrick Robertson's role and what we, what we see – from Patrick Robertson moving forward and what he possibly could mean to the Saints. Me and DC that had some animated discussions about uh, this particular topic before the show started, so we're going to bring it to the show so you guys can hear what we're saying. We'll also talk about uh, what what's Kurt Coleman's role. This is a very intriguing thing. A lot of people uh, haven't really, I don't know. We could have done the whole show on that, huh? 
The conversation we had. Uh, right, but the <laughs> Kurt Coleman situation, and we won't talk about that because it was one of the first really si- big signings the Saints made uh, before the free agency period got started. And we want to talk about what is his role with this team. You know, me and DC talked about, you know, the Saints using the three shapes and look but, and, and the like. So we're going to get into that and talk about that because that was really, we need to really get into that because it's really interesting. That and the Patrick Robinson discussion. And then, of course, we'll talk about our top catalyst on defense. Of course, the prior show we talked about the Saints having a top 10 defense. If they're going to have a top defense, a top 10 defense, this year, you got to have a catalyst to lead that defense. And, of course, DC is going to give you his defensive catalyst. I'm going to give you mine as well, and uh, that will be the show. Now, let's get right into it, DC. Starting off with the Mike, Tom- uh, Mike Thomas discussion. Mike Thomas looking good. He's battling in OTAs with La- La- LaShawn, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, and he's looking really good. What's your take on um, Mike Thomas's transition, man, from <laughs> – <laughs> just I mean, from wherever he is, from the moon to the to the sun, I guess. I, I mean, the guy is just terrific, <laughs> man. What you think about that? Um, I think he's in another dimension. I'm gonna just go ahead and stick with that one. The flat earth is gonna be mad about me with that, but um, <laughs> you say you're I, on another plane. That's what you need. You're on man. another plane, though. There Mike Thomas, go. um, he's a throwback receiver with the abilities of a new school guy. I mean, you gotta think about it. In an era of track star receivers, Mike Thomas ain't about to unroll, you know, outrun nobody like that. But some kind of way, he's always behind the defense. It's, it's Antonio Brown like. Um, Antonio Brown looks like the fastest guy on the field, but when you look at his numbers, he's really not. But, um, you got that aspect of his game. Then you have the aspect of his game that's physical and nasty. He actually wants to block, and he does a very good job at it. Remember the Minnesota game? He took two of their defenders clean up off the field. Nobody don't talk about that, but I've seen it. Um, Mike Thomas does a lot for you in all phases of the game. Then his play on the field, man, and he talks trash. He's a, he's a Twitter champion as well. Um, but he's given... Michonne Lattimore was probably, in my opinion, and we we just be honest, I'm gonna say top five cornerback in the league at this point. Um, there ain't a lot of them. They don't make them like him, and he giving him all his money's worth. But Michonne Lattimore does get Mike Thomas sometimes too, so we ain't gonna throw him out there like he don't do his thing. But I think the aspect of us adding Michonne Lattimore last year. Help Mike Thomas take his game to another level and get super motivated to go even even further. And to me, um, he's a top five receiver in this league right now, and only going into his third year. And that's saying a lot with some of the guys out there. People don't think he's better than Keenan Allen, but I do. <laughs> well, I got it. Like I said, man, I think uh, Mike Thomas just is just awesome to me. I think his work ethic and his mind state is to be the best, and I don't think anything is going to stop him from getting there. He's going he, he, at this stage of his career, just in the second year, he's already considered among the top five in elite wide receivers in the NFL. Speaks volume to what this guy is capable of doing, and I just think that you're going to see more fantastic uh, years out of this man. He's going to break every record the Saints uh, wide receivers ever set, and, and a couple of NFL ones too on his way to. Uh, a pro, uh, a Hall of Fame career. This is my take on Mike Thomas. You can see greatness, and uh, I see greatness in Mike Thomas. Moving on, let's talk about some other wide receivers, DC, because we talked about Mike Thomas, but Cameron Meredith has a pretty good uh, uh, OTAs around two as well. He made a couple of nice snags in the game. Meredith looking healthy. And we talked about Cameron Meredith in in the last podcast. Uh, if you want to listen, uh, the Ladies, right here, uh, so you can take a listen to it if you haven't. But Cameron Meredith is a guy that looked real good in, in camp. Big, fluid wide receiver, making it difficult for a lot of the lower guys to make confidence. But the Saints bring in uh, excellent wide receiver in Cameron Meredith. They bring in, they trade, of course, Trey Quan Smith. They, I mean, they draft the Trey Quan Smith, bring him in there. And I just think overall, they didn't drafted the wide receiver, upgrade, upgraded the wide receiver position so much so with Cameron Meredith in there with his size, speed, ability, and Traquan Smith. But Cameron Meredith looking like he didn't got clear of some of these injuries, D.C., looking like a nice pickup for the thing. Most definitely, man. I mean, Cameron Meredith is exactly what you thought he was going to be when uh, you picked him up. 
so much so that all the fans, I never get over this. I remember when we got them and I went looking on some of the Bears uh, websites and stuff, all their fans were pissed. <laughs> like, they know what he is. So um, we definitely going to get a steal in this guy as long as he was able to shake back from that injury. And he's had a very substantial amount of time to prepare himself. I mean, he was injured way in the preseason, I believe, last year. So, I mean, he had a really long time to be able to come back from this injury. And the skill set that he brings to the Saints is like, I don't think we ever had a player quite like him. Um, He's, I guess, a Lance Moore type or that type of role he could have. But he can also burn you deep, almost looking like a Robert Meacham. So, you know, it's like a combination of um, some Saints players put together in this one guy, man. And I think he's going to be an excellent addition at the number two spot alongside of um, Michael Thomas, but probably lining up in the slot. So he'll really be the number two, but they might put him in the slot a lot. Man, that's just amazing to me, man, because we, of course, we know one and two go Mike Thomas and Ted Ginn Jr., but could you imagine any lineup with Cameron Meredith surpasses Ted Ginn and the start the rotation, forcing them down into another position, and it would be Mike Thomas on one side, Cameron Meredith on the other side, those big receivers running around there, man. That, would, would, that, would that be spectacular? Oh, most definitely. And then you got to look at the guns that uh, Meredith got on him. I'm sure he has some blocking ability. He's a physical receiver. Um, obviously, he's going to be able to do more for us in the run game than Ted Ginn can. So um, I definitely see him taking that number two spot if everything goes as planned. Well, this is another more information here is that I had a little sighting from Gail Benson. She showed up at the – at the OTAs and show her face. And we just got a lot of love for Gail Benson, man. She didn't mention a lot, but she's spectacular, man. Classy, beautiful woman, doing all these great things, getting the city of New Orleans the Super Bowl, also uh, working with the Pelicans, doing all this stuff, and just being a model of consistency and keeping everything moving, business approach, and likewise, New Orleans. Big ups to Gail Benson. She was there showing her support and the capacity. And let's talk about King Crawley right quick before we hit the break. Ken Crawley uh, made a couple of plays, two in the OTAs, D.C. Now, me and you talked about Mr. Crawley uh, off the uh, show, and we're going to bring some back to the show in the next break because we're about to break in a little bit. But Ken Crawley, man, he was a guy that made some plays in the OTAs, man. And uh, would you say that Ken Crawley has a little a bit of pressure on him uh, moving ahead to, to kind of keep that position? What you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Ken Crawley, before you walk in, ain't that your thing? That's real. That's real. Um, I don't think he should, but in the reality of uh, what it is, knowing Patrick Robertson's skill set, seeing him here as a saint, and we had him as the number one cornerback, um, didn't work out. But the last year before he left, when we actually started uh, trying other people in that role, he actually oh, oh, DC, 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 hold on just a, just a second, my brother. We're about to hit the break. Just hold that comment. We're going to make sure you get back to finish that comment. Uh, we're about to go inside first. When we come back, we're going to finish up on DC, talking points, and we'll hit you with some more topics on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Sports Coma. Make sure you the guys. Stay with us. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. I'm talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G-Balance. Go to 
www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash I dash view. Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition cover athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was an NBA 2K legend cover athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup, every incredible shot, every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And, um, and him playing at number two We actually tried that before When he was uh, a saint Prior to being a saint now You know And uh, he looked better at the two Than he did at the one But we still had issues with him But uh, what Philly was able to figure out That he played very well in the slot So I don't think all hope is gone For Ken Crawley But I think there is a chance That he could be in contention For his spot Because uh, P-Rob he he gonna get you some picks, and you know with Marshawn Lattimore on one side, they definitely gonna be throwing that ball on the other side. So you definitely want a guy over there that's gonna get you some turnovers. Ken Crawley may come up with one every now and again, but he's not really known for being a ball hawk. Well, that's something we talked about off break, and that's that's one of the things that we're gonna get into. Is one of the topics we're gonna talk about is Patrick Robinson's role here, of course. You know they signed Patrick Robinson to a multi-year deal worth about twenty million, I think ten million of his four yeah, yeah, So he, right, he got so he it was five million dollars signing bonus. So Patrick Rob, for P. Rob as he's called, is a guy that comes back here. The Saints put up good money for him and Kirk Coleman. So the, when the money, exactly everybody line, always want to come home with us, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's good to come home when you got this kind of cooking and this kind of atmosphere out here, but. Uh, like I said, Patrick Robinson and Kirk Coleman, two very interesting secondary signers because they bring veteran leadership to a very young uh, secondary. And uh, they spent good money on both these guys, $18 million for Kirk Coleman, $20 million for Patrick Robinson. So, you know, we saying, well, this guy's going to play the nickel, this guy's going to be the third safety. We're going to challenge that. We're going to challenge that on the show because you're not going to give these guys that kind of money to come in and be reserved players. So these guys are getting paid this kind of money to come here and make an impact. But we're going to talk about that later on. Let's finish talking about some of the other guys during the OTAs. Uh, Elvin Kamara. You see Elvin Kamara looks pretty good. We're watching some footage on all. Watch him run around out there in OTAs. He looks a little heavier to me. He looks a little heavier. Still very fast. Still very elusive. Still uh, so much as the the rookie, uh, the um, rookie of the year uh, that he is, you know, even improved. So, Obviously, he's getting prepared for the extra workload that he anticipating, even though the Saints said they're not going to give him any extra um, workload because of the absence of Mark uh, Ingram. Don't believe that, man. I'll have to bring back some of the special effects about Sean Payton, a liar. You know, that's, 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 you better not believe that part. If you do you know, what he said about that, I got, I got two bridges to sell to you across the Mississippi River in New Orleans, and you believe that crap. Spoiler and, alert. And, and, Sean Payton said he was going to give a uh, – Kamari five extra carries now. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing. About five extra. 
five extra. Yeah, no, but they were right. uh, they were saying uh, will he get the full fifteen? I really think he's not lying. I don't think he's gonna give him Mark Ingram full fifteen carries. But um, Alvin Kamara is definitely gonna get a shot for at least four weeks to be the guy. Um, we've never had a running back like him. And uh, in the Saints building, period. You never had a do it all guy, uh, basically a complete back, other than what, Adrian Peterson? And he was probably, you know, on the wrong side of 30. So you got a few other guys that's going to get some touches, like B. Scott, um, Jonathan Williams, uh, Trey Edmonds, uh, Daniel Lasco. They got to figure out how they're going to do that with all them guys. But Kamari, man, uh, he's about six foot. 210. I don't understand why everybody feel like he's small and he can't handle it. It's, it's just funny to me every time I, they say that. He's bigger than some guys that are number one running backs already. But for whatever reason, everybody thinks he's small and he can't take a pound in and he can't do this and he can't do that. And all he does is line up and play. So I think the same thing's gonna happen. And, um, eventually when we don't sign, Mark Ingram, you're probably going to see Alvin Kamara out there looking. Something like Ty Gurley, man. Like I said, he might be the first guy in recent memory to get a 1,000 yards receiving, a 1,000 yards rushing. I'm not sure if it's been done before. Maybe it has, but he'll probably be the first guy to bring it back. Well, I mean, if, if that's the case, of course, we know about the fact that uh, when Alvin Kamara could bring to the to, to Saints, uh, looking at some of his statistics from the previous year, Question wise, 120 attempts, 728 rushing yards, averaged about six yards to carry. Uh, excellent, excellent running back had, uh, had eight, t- eight, t- eight touchdowns, eight touchdowns running the ball, averaging 45 yards a game rushing as a wide receiver. Now, of course, he was second behind Mark Ingram in rushing. That goes as far as the wide receiver goes. He was second uh, on the team in catches. Behind only the great Mike Thomas, who had 104. This guy had 81, 81 catches for 826 yards, averaged 10 yards a catch, had five touchdowns. Can you uh, imagine how much more efficient he could be as a receiver if we had more wide receivers? Yeah, we don't get an opportunity to see that, D.C., because, man, you had uh, Cameron Mary, you had Trey Quine Smith to the mixture. Hey, man, we're going to see an opportunity to see how great Elvin Kamara is with I all of the Drew pressure off the front of these wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, Drew got just, just put that, just put three more years on. He probably, he like, probably, he, he, Drew probably ain't sleeping, man. <laughs> nah, he, he, he jumping at the pit to get going, man. I didn't know that about it. But let's segue from one running back to another. We went from Elvin Kamara, let's go to Bo Scott. Bo Scott, of course, Austin Scott, the running back out of Louisiana Tech, draft pick for the Saints. Uh, they took him in the sixth round of this past uh, NFL draft, and he's a, a guy a lot of people, including D.C., compares to Darren Sproul. I think D.C. even went as far as can, saying that he could be uh, uh, close to P.F. Thomas. I haven't heard anybody. Nah, I, I, I said uh, um, he he is Darren Sproul, but, yeah, I did compare him to P.F. Thomas because a lot of people don't know about Boston Scott. Is He's incredibly strong, and unlike Darren Sproul, he's not looking to run around you. People, people don't realize that about Boston Scott, but they're going to learn. He has leverage. He runs like a little bowling ball. He can run you over, but he can shake you. So to me, he was like a, a, a mixture between uh, Pierre and Darren Strohs by him being excellent in the screen game and the type of role that he's probably going to get is going to be similar to Pierre Thomas instead of the Darren Strohs role, which Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara clearly already has. Right. It's going to be interesting to see both Scott because he'll get plenty of opportunities based on the fact that Mark Ingram is going to be out for the Would it be first, funny first to have a, four weeks. a power back that's 5'8"? <laughs> it would be. The guy that the Saints had a couple of years ago. Remember, he runs he really the, good you know, up the middle, though, man. That's what people don't know about Bob Scott. He runs good what? inside. There was a, run, it, a running back that the had two years ago. But uh, actually, it was last. Year. Was oh, last year? I remember that that little short guy who was uh, moving. The, the short ball. guy was a yeah. bowling ball. Yeah, he was a little bowling ball. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, him remember. and Trey Mine Edmonds. Trey, Trey, uh, Trey. Edmonds, and they ended up picking Trey over him. I was like, why did you guys not get that little bowling ball back? I forgot. I'm gonna look at his name. Jonathan, I, I think it was similar to the guy we got on the team now. It was Jonathan something. I remember his first name was Jonathan. I don't remember his last name. I don't know where he wound up going. But I think that's all he could do, though. He wasn't 
Um, he wasn't picking up the yeah, block machines. He couldn't catch right. the ball out the backfield. Like, you know, he just had that one thing. You know, the Saints don't really like that. You got to be multi-talented over here. Yeah, that's definitely a prerequisite from hanging around with this team, no doubt about it. But Bo Scott, looking for a lot of big things from Bo Scott uh, moving ahead. Uh, taking a look at the uh, Chiefs, dealing with the Saints, uh, Next move, we're going to talk next topic. We're going to talk about Patrick Robinson. We're going to go into that. Because we talked about Patrick Robinson before we touched upon it, but Patrick Robinson's addition to this team brings a very interesting perspective. Uh, a lot of people say Patrick Robinson will come in and be the third cornerback um, to, you know, behind, obviously, Marshawn Lattimore and Ken Crawley before you walk it. When it comes down to it, we look at him and say, well, let's investigate this a little further, D.C. Me and you talked about this off break talked about this prior to the show, very deep discussion on it. Patrick Robinson role, in my opinion, looking at the money that they paid him, they gave him a four-year deal worth $20 million with $10 million of the guarantee. You don't give a third-string running back that kind of money and say, well, you're going to be our nickel guy. I think that the Saints, I think that Patrick Robinson, with his skill and his ability, his smarts, his uh, his ability, right now he's a better cornerback than Ken Crawley. Maybe down the line Ken Crawley could surpass him. But right now, in my opinion, I think that he is a better cornerback than Ken Crawley. I think you agree with me on that. This is the question. Patrick Robinson, I say when it starts, Patrick Robinson will definitely push to take Ken Crawley's job. What you say about that? Um, I definitely think he's going to try to push, but I have to disagree. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Patrick Robinson. Darius Victor. Darius Victor. Is Dar- the name oh, was Darius Victor? Oh, man, I was way off. Darius Victor. Well, I got Jonathan. The name. All right. I'll be glad to be. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, pa- Patrick Robinson is perfect in the slot, so I don't see why you would want to mess that up. Um, and you probably won't want to overuse him on the outside. Maybe he gets some plays on the outside depending on matchups. Um, what receivers we're playing against, if we're playing a guy that's too fast for Ken Crawley, maybe we put Patrick Robinson out there. If they're playing a guy that's big, you put Ken Crawley out there. He's obviously bigger. He's more physical. Um, Ken Crawley is a very good cornerback. And I think, as usual, the Saints are ahead of the curve. We've been implementing slot receivers before they were popular. And now I think the new phase in the NFL is you basically have to have three starting cornerbacks. So as usual, I think the Saints are just ahead of the curve. We paid a guy, and then he got twenty million. But I mean, come on, man, it's over four years. You know what I'm saying? That's probably the same money. Ken Crawley would probably get the exact same deal. Michonne Lattimore is the only guy that's gonna get super paid back there. Um. And that's $5 million a year. So it's it's not a lot of money uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I don't think he, he does enough to overtake uh, Ken Crawley at the second position. Because as you know, Ken Crawley isn't great in the slot. So why would you, why would you mess that up? I don't know. I think Ken Crawley could be a pretty damn good slot man. You know, I think I think he has the ability to play the slot. He's big, he's physical, and I think his skills kind of lend him to play in the slot position. Uh, but big you know, and physical ain't what you want in the slot, though. You want you got you want quick and, you want quick twitch and fast. He, he has speed to play the, the, the cornerback position in the slot. He has the speed. He has the physicality because still you want twitchy and twitchy, but you still got a guy that can put hands on him and be physical with him in the slot. And Ken Crawley does have attributes to be able to lend him to plan in the slot position. The thing is, why well, I say what I say about Patrick Robinson overtaking him in that uh, uh, in overtaking him is that you know, I, I, like I said, I like Ken Crawley. I think Ken Crawley came from a long way off to become the solid cornerback that he is, but he makes a lot of a lot of stupid mistakes, too many pass interference. He holds entirely too much. If you want to hold, be a little bit more slick with it. Study some take on Deion Sanders or whomever. The guy that's just used to putting their hands on guys, being physical with them, but no one to take the hands off the guys, not holding them and putting your arms around. He does a lot of boneheaded plays that really kind of get you pissed with him. But but he's a he's a solid cornerback to me. Fifty four total tackles on a on a season. Got one interception last year. Very commendable numbers for King Crawley. But I think Patrick Robinson's a little bit more heady. I think Patrick and him uh, is, is a guy that's got a nose for the ball. And you're right. Patrick can't play. A, he's, a, he's an ideal corner man, and you need three really solid cornerbacks to play that position. 
And I would not be surprised if people push, would ask the question, if you would ask which one of these guys would lose their jobs to the guy behind them, I would put my money and say, well, Pat, Pat Robinson has a solid camp, and he comes in and does what he was doing in, with Philadelphia and continues to build on his solid because he had the cr- he had the problem of his career right now. So if if I think that Petrovsky considered to be that solid player, there's no doubt in my mind that I think that he could possibly push Baskin Crawley for that position. But anyway, DC, that's that discussion. Let's move into our other discussion. We're gonna talk about with Kirk Coleman, and this is your most animated uh, topic we were talking why, about. Why got to why you got to put me out to like this? My most animated. What's that, what's that about, man? And let me tell the people, man, we about to, well, we about to, you lucky we about to go into our break, man. But, um, DC argued me for almost two hours, y'all. Two hours? Almost two that hours. One, man, don't put that on me. He argued me about two hours. Come on, y'all, what y'all that brother long winner is? Me or him? Uh, DC. <laughs> you definitely won the long winner award, brother. But anyway, uh, <laughs> But anyway, we're about to go into our next break. When we come back on on the side of the break, we're going to talk about a very important topic dealing with Kirk Coleman. Where does Kirk Coleman sit in the grand scheme of things as far as uh, the things put him? Why would you give a guy $18 million, three years, the first guy that you sign coming into the new year on the back end defense? Who's the odd man out here? Who's the odd man out? We'll look into this. And we'll talk about this more. We also are uh, going to talk about our top catalyst discussion for another side of the break. So stay with us. You're listening to the Sports Coma. Thank you and the guy. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children 101 powerful children affirmations a guide to positive child self-image order your copy today thank you for listening to the pro media network who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours if you are benefiting positively from our content please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the pro media network That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network and support the true independent artists. Check out the Crown They Ass World Podcast, covering all the news and issues that affect you and the ones you care about, only on the PRO Media Network. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to The Sports Coma. Big Q and the Guys, we talking Saints, man. We just got you talking OTAs. We went off the top break. We're talking about roles. Roles, man. What role Kirk Coleman is going to play in this upcoming season? Of course... Let me set the table here, DC. We know Kirk Coleman signed with the Saints. Let me see if I can pull up some of the information. According to what I'm looking at from NFL.com, of course, the Saints got with him on March the 3rd. 
They signed Kirk Coleman and they signed him to a three year deal worth eighteen million dollars for the basically six point five of it is guaranteed in year one. I say that to say that Kirk Coleman now of course he spent some time with Carolina but prior to that he was with Philadelphia and he registered eleven interceptions in his first two seasons as a Panther, but he didn't have none last year. He had a solid season of seventy something plus tackle, no interceptions, which is the, the diva stat for that position. But looking ahead, why my, my, my take about it is of course you know what happened with the Minnesota Miracle. We also have young guys like Von Bell, and of course Von Bell led the team in tackles last year, uh, for the Saints. He was a top man with eighty three tackles, four and a half sacks. Von Bell doing the big Marcus Williams, of course, was third on the team. He had 73 tackles and four interceptions. Pretty solid year for your safety, uh, rookie safety. So, hence, the season changes. Miracle, Minnesota Miracle happens. Sorry to throw that on you guys. Uh, but season starts. Kirk Coleman's the first big free agent to sink sign. They give him a three-year deal worth $18 million. My question to you and all those thank you fans is, would you pay a safety, a uh, veteran safety, $18 million, to play as a third safety and not start somewhere in one of those positions? So that's the question. Does does Kirk Coleman's contract and his position here, being he was the first person to sing, had a pretty full free agency in terms of they could have waited and got, you know, better deal from, you know, got another safety perhaps, but the Saints made it a priority to get Coleman here. Now, is that because they don't trust Marcus Williams or Ryan Bell? But we don't, this is a question that I'm going to answer and DC is going to answer. Of course, I'm going to let DC answer first. And he let him tell you who he believes, what position. Because, of course, we know the Saints play a lot of tree safety, the modified nickel where they throw the extra safety in there. But most of the time, they're not going to play that modified nickel. You'll see them in a 4-3. You'll see them in that tree safety look. Hell, you might see them in a the 3-4. You know, they, they have all that on the table. But the base defense, as it's registered, is the Saints play a 43 defense. That is the base defense. It's not a modified nickel, even though they play that because of injury. DC, this question to you, my friend. Uh, Kirk Coleman's three year deal, $18 million. Does he back up at the third safety spot, or does he take one of our safety's positions? If so, which one? I think neither. Um, I think it's the thing we're going to see exactly what we saw last year with Kenny Vaccaro. You're going to see a mixture of all of the above. But if I had to say one guy that was solidified, unlike what you agree upon, it would be Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams was the only guy that pretty much was in on most of the snaps. He didn't come out of the game a lot. But Von Bell still managed to lead the team in tackles, and him and Ken, him and uh, Kenny Vaccaro would flip-flop a lot. And if you look at the money aspects, uh, Kirk Coleman is a veteran. He's also Ohio State Buckeye, so that's another guy like that that we can add to our team. He understands uh, veteran leadership. He understands late-game situations. So from what I see, he's basically going to have the role that Kenny Vaccaro had, but uh, maybe a little different. I don't know if they're going to put him on slot receivers from time to time when we're running that three-safety look. Um and maybe you can have your guy Patrick Robinson on outside and Ken Crawley sitting on the bench. So it's it's a lot that could happen. I think training camp will determine <clears throat> what goes on. But what I can tell you is Von Bell in a three safety uh set was probably our worst defender in the slot. Uh hundred twenty two point nine uh passer rating that he allowed covering that slot position in the three safety setup. So um Marcus Williams is pretty much considered an elite safety by a pro football focus. Um, a lot of his peers also said he was a really great player, and he probably was the best player drafted in the whole second round of last year's draft. So I don't really see us benching Kirk Coleman for him, and I don't really see us benching uh, Von Bell for Kirk Coleman showing that he also put up five, uh, four and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, 78 or so touchdowns, uh, two tackles for a loss, and five sacks. So it's, it's very perplexing, man. Um, it's almost at this point it's just preference-based, and we're all just making speculations because on paper um, any move can be debatable 
And I think the Saints are doing the opposite. They're just going to throw everything on the wall and see what sticks. That's been the formula that's been working. So whoever outplays who is what it is. Kirk Coleman adds veteran leadership. Um, you're giving them the same amount of money, basically, that you gave Kenny McCarthy. Absolutely. Um, I hear what you're saying. But of course, you know, I always pull the different things because half <laughs> the battle is speculating. It is. <laughs> if you know when you listen to the sports coma, and we've been doing this going into three years now, when you listen to the sports coma, you know you, you're going to get more nonsense takes from us. And I'm not afraid to put it on the line. But, you know, I, I think everybody know that about me. I ain't afraid to put it on the line. Now, I put it on the line. Or a lot. And, and the reason why I said it is because I got, you know, I look at things, I got a feel, I get a feel for certain things, I see what's happening, I see, you know, you pay this guy this much money at this certain position, you did that at a certain time. You know, the whole Kirk Trollman thing kind of rung a fire alarm bell for me because it was the first move the Saints made out the gate to get a man three uh, years, $18 million. And of course, you could have gave that to Kenny Vaccaro. You're absolutely right on that. But it's the fact that, remember, the most Stamping play mentally with that Minnesota miracle in which Marcus Williams had a terrific season, less than that horrible play. But that was a horrible play at the worst time that prevented the team from going to the NFC Championship round where they would have beaten Philadelphia and ultimately went on to face Philly in the Super Bowl. Now, with that said, I love Marcus Williams. I think he's a fantastic talent. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he recoups from that because I've been hearing a lot of positive stuff from him. He's been working hard in the off season. But, you know, you can never really tell until you get on that field the things start working if he can ever make it over such a horrible, horrendous play. I think he could. We'll see. But the bottom line is about the Kirk Coleman thing. It's the first move you made. You spent three years, $18 million on Kirk Coleman, veteran guy back there. He could take the, the Kenny Vaccaro role, which he's switching well, out. Like Kenny out. Vaccaro, the first I, guy we cut? <laughs> well, yeah. But the first guy you bring on is a safety on the back end. After, after the first guy that. you cut was a safety. <laughs> the first guy you took was a safety, and the first guy you picked up was a uh, a safety. But that was prior to free agency even jumping off. Kirk Coleman signed that the same guy him before free agency, which showed me that there was a a a uh, I guess say a need to fulfill that position as opposed to wait because the safety free agency was pretty much. You could have got a solid safety. You had Eric Reed. You had Boston, the guy from the Chargers out there. You know, you had pictures out there. Now, with that said, I know I, I, the Saints, of course, they watch these guys play. They know these guys a little closer. They you know, have an t- opportunity to study get these guys. They know them inside and out, what they're capable of doing and what they're capable of being. I think at some level, at some level, that got to play in the back of your mind about uh, Marcus Williams. Now, we know this uh, when Kirk Coleman comes in, does he take one of those guys' positions? You know, does he take one of their positions? Because sooner or later, you're not going to play the nickel, the, the three nickel position every down down. Sooner or later, you're going to see a base package when you only have two safeties out there. Now, my question is, which one of those two safeties is it going to be? I don't think it's going to be the same guys we had from last year, uh, Bell and uh, Marcus Williams. I think Kirk Coleman comes in there with Bell. That's just my take on it. I think that you're going to see Coleman and Bell together before you see Coleman and Williams. Now, you guys, y'all can chime in and tell me what you think. If you agree with me, you agree, agree with D.C., but I don't think the secondary is going to look, 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 look like it was last year. It's going to be a different turnover. The secondary is going to look I think Kirk Coleman comes in. He's going to look to start. Pat Robinson comes in. He's going to look to start. And I think he's going to challenge Ken Crawley. I think he's going to beat Ken Crawley. I think he's going to take Ken Crawley's position. I think Kirk Coleman is going to take uh, Marcus Williams' position. I just think that's and Brian Bell. You know, it's something it, this secondary will not look the same. That's my perspective on it. Now, as far as my lead, D.C. had the debate of who's, which one would you, uh, if he had to lose out to, which one would you take? Well, he would say, okay, I, I put Kirk Coleman over here and then put Marcus Williams there and all this kind of stuff. But in the end, man, my take is Kirk Coleman and Von Bell, when they go to 4-3, that's who the guys are, that I see. You're not going to give a guy eight million, $18 million and say, well, you're going to make you the third safety. And you got basically two guys out there playing for chump change. Those guys still under rookie, basically rookie contracts. You know, young, uh, first two, three year man contracts, they're not making any money. You're going to get a guy $20 million to be your third best cornerback. So that's, that's foolishness. Not in today's NFL. They, that money's just not handed out like lollipops. Them guys are really earning that money. When you pay a guy $18 million and $20 million, you better believe they're going to have a pivotal role in the system. That's my take on it. Anyway, DC, let's get into the next, uh, 
topic, about catalyst, the top catalyst on the defense. Now, you said from the previous podcast that the Saints have a top five defense as opposed to my, my suggestion was top ten. Now, of course, you said who was top, really top ten? <laughs> Who was top ten last year? Who was right there? Right, so, <clears throat> so my thing is, based on all the moves that the Saints did, Davenport. The two we just talked about, Pat Robertson, Kurt Coleman, Demario Davis, you know. Then, you know, some minuscule moves as well, like you talk about Jay Bromley. Now, I don't know how Jay would play. Now, he obviously would be a welcome addition. He's a young veteran guy, big, strong guy that, that'll look really good in that, that position behind Tyler Davidson and Onyemata. But we, like you said, they're looking. We're looking at top five here. You know what? We're gonna, you know what? DC, just hold on. We're about to go into our next break right here. Got the music playing here. Anyway, we'll tackle that question on the other side of the break. You gonna tackle we gonna like call, uh, Marcus Williams? No, oh, no. <laughs> we gonna tackle like Brian Bell did with eighty-three total tackles that leave the team. So, uh, that's how we gonna tackle. That's how I'm gonna tackle. I'm not gonna tackle, tackle like tackles, Williams. man. Where you getting eighty from? Right. 83, I'm getting the CBS Mark, team Marcus and NFL Williams had 73. 83, Von Bell led the team. And then we'll come back on the other side of the <laughs> I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. Clear, clean, great-tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. Follow the Sports Coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Best fucking sports podcast in the country. Welcome back to the Sports Coma. Big Q and the guy, man. Episode 197, we covering OTA's week number two. Breaking them all down, man. We're in our final segment of the show. Thank you all for joining us and uh, joining us with this journey here at Sports Coma, episode 197. Listen, man, if y'all want more Saints news, you don't have to search for it. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page, Big Q and the guys uh, at the Sports Coma Podcast on Facebook. Go there and put in the Sports Coma to pull up our, uh, you know, our show. Subscribe, man. And also on Twitter, we also on Twitter. We're on a bunch of mediums, to be quite honest with you. But Facebook and Twitter is a medium where we do a lot of blasting out all the latest articles and information on the Saints, Pelicans, boxing news, football news, whatever. Uh, you don't have to go and search it for it. Just sign up, uh, subscribe to both the Sports Coma Twitter and Facebook page, and you'll have it at your at your leisure. Anyway, also go to our YouTube page if you're not a subscriber. If you're listening, go there and subscribe, and it'll give you updates when our new shows come out, so you can be in a no 
chime in with us. Also, interact with us. Now, we pro promote interaction. Please, by all means, if you disagree with DC or disagree with myself, please chime in, comment on the comment section. Let us know what you think. We we really love no, to to know what you guys think about our topics that we bring uh, forth. But with that said, let's get back into the show. DC, we was talking about top catalysts for the defense. Of course, we talked about the Saints' top 10 defense. Will it be a top 10 defense again in the 2018-2019 season? And, of course, you said yes, of course. And, of course, you raised the bar and said, hey, man, we're going to be a top five offense, a top five defense, excuse me. Well, tell me why you think it will be a top five defense. Give me some of your – I said one catalyst, but feel free to kind of liberate on that. Tell me yeah, thank you. why you believe, no, it's hard why you think. I know it's hard to pick one dude, <laughs> man, but uh, but you without giving a lot of guys credit, but give me your take on why you think that the Saints will be a top five unit in the NFL this year. Um, Playmakers on every level. We, we had a handful of weaknesses last year, and we've basically – address them like there isn't anything that we were soft at that we didn't address we needed a better, better pass rush we gave up uh, a first round draft pick from next year to make sure we got that guy we needed a middle linebacker we went out and spent the money to get pretty much one of the best middle linebackers out there in free agency we needed help with a, a third cornerback we went and got the best uh, slot cornerback available on the market and we also needed some veteran leadership for our secondary obviously after the playoff game and we went out and got a guy like Kirk Coleman so at every level to me the Saints have repaired whatever issues they would have had from last year as well as keeping everything that they already had we kept uh, Alex Okafor we signed him back Pretty much all we lost is Kenny Vaccaro, and he's easily replaced by Kirk Coleman. And then you have the aspect of uh, Michonne Lattimore, who emerged as probably a, the top five cornerback last year. I don't, I don't see. I mean, the guy didn't even allow a touchdown all year, and we had the worst secondary, pretty much ever two years ago in NFL history. And he comes here and doesn't even give up a touchdown. So you got him. You got uh, the question mark and Marcus Williams, but if he continues on the path that he currently was on his rookie year, you're looking at a possible pro bowler at safety. You got Vaughn Bell, who you can pretty much say the same thing about. Um, then you got Ken Crawley, who is nothing to sneeze at. Hands on, too many flags sometimes, but very solid NFL cornerback. You got our defensive tackle, uh, Rankins, who's definitely going to take a step forward. You got Oyamata stepping up. And how can I not mention the centerpiece of the defense, Cam Jordan? With all of these additions added, and then you add Davenport on the opposite side of him, it takes a lot of pressure off this guy who kills it anyway. So any way you look at it, I don't see how the Saints defense can take a step back and fall out of the top ten. So in my mind, they would have to move up. Jacksonville, um, the Texans may be flirting around up there. You got Baltimore. Then after that, it's free fall. So we could easily be in the fourth or fifth spot. I have to agree with everything you said on that. You know, I like to be adversarial at times, but uh, it's hard to be adversarial when you got straight troops like that. The Saints have uh, made – like you said, they've covered the slate on the defensive end. And, they, and not to mention, you named some terrific names, but the depth is really amazing. The level of depth that the Saints have on the defense is, is, is just on, it's beyond belief. The Saints have a series of pass rushes. Where they can, me and you talked about this all break some time ago. We talked about pass rushing in waves. Pass rushing in waves. The top that you got, if you take uh, guys like Cam and Davenport, who, you know, office starters, and then you put in the next group, which is uh, Alex Okafor or uh, George Johnson or uh, Haloi Takaha or Trey Hendrickson. You can hit people in waves of pass rushes, waves of pass rushes, waves of pass rushes. So the Saints have that depth. At the linebacker position, which has been a position that the Saints have been dealing with for years now, to find a solid linebacker. The Saints have done a terrific job of adding solid veterans 
to to the core since the last three years when they brought in Craig Robertson. The following year was Alex uh, AJ AJ Klein, who's terrific. Then you bring in Demario Davis this year. Then you had Manti Teo last year as well. Then you have young guys to play the position, undrafted guys that's coming in. You got the drafting of Alex Anzalone, who has turned out to be a spectacular player as well. Then the cornerback positions we talked about priorly. We talked about P. Rob. We talked about. Uh, the fantastic guys that they picked up, the young guys like uh, Kareem, uh, Cameron Moore and uh, Natrell Jamerson, who who can play multiple positions. They need to play the cornerback or safety, whatever they need. And they have a lot like Lyndon Stevens, the cornerback out of Cincinnati. I know we don't talk about him much, but they have a lot of solid undrafted guys. Two within the safety positions, we talk about Kirk Coleman. Then you have guys like Chris Banjo, who's spectacular. We talk about the defense, offense, top three unit, top five defense according to D.C., I gotta agree with him, and especially, and then that don't float your boat. Even the special teams, which we're not really talking about until the game start, we talk about special teams when it really be important. We have to make those field goals. We have to kick kick the ball. We have the best punter in my estimation in the NFL. And Thomas Moore stayed reworking his deal to be down here for uh, four or five years. And then you have Will Lutz, is, 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 is awesome. Then you have the kick return aspect, D.C. or Bo Scott. Uh, you still have Tommy Lee, Jerry Lewis out there, and other terrific talent in the special team area of the field uh, that they've added. You know, the Gunners, the Gunners position uh, that Cameron Moore plays and, uh, and, and, and the likes. It's just Justin Hardy, Chris Banjo, those standouts, and you know, Nathan Stupar, uh, my, uh, you know, those guys. Terrific talent, deep talent, deep team all the way around. And that, to me, means why I think that the Saints uh, will be, uh, I agree with DC, will be a top five unit based upon that. Now, you said the only reason that doesn't happen if injuries occur. But I think the Saints have really kind of... like to be a pretty significant injury, too. I'm about to tell you, though, because... If you look at it, the Saints have braced themselves against that by adding this terrific depth. I mean, they have solid depth everywhere. You would have to have a barrage of injuries, and I'm not casting anything bad upon the team because I want us to be healthy because this is no yeah. doubt about it, y'all. This is what a Super Bowl team looked like. This Hall of Fame quarterback yeah. that played with talent in every position. This we is both forgot to mention like. uh, the blind-headed bandit. You got Alex Anzalone coming back off oh, I the that. surgery. That's I, I didn't hear you. And uh, that's repaired, man. He's looking to have a real breakout. Yeah, I mean, this dude has star written all over him, bro. Kind of look like Clay Matthews running out there. He do. He do. He really do. He do look like Clay, Clay Matthews. I remember when he, when we were watching some of the preseason games for him and A.J. Klein playing, and then a few of the games when you see both of them were actually healthy. They were, like, sprinting around. I said, damn, I haven't seen something like this as, as you know, lying at this level of, in, you know, locked in linebacker play. Uh, since the, I ain't gonna put him up there with the dome, but trust a lot of pressure, but I was pre, I was really excited to see AJ Klein and Alex Anzalone healthy, moving around the way they were doing, attacking the ball, following the ball. Alex, AJ, AJ definitely has a nose to the ball, but Alex Anzalone, man, he is terrific, man. He, he has good speed, he has great vision, really intelligent, can move along that line and find plays. And then the fantastic thing about it is you can just allow him to be instinctive and play now because Demario Davis is the brains on the defense. Demario Davis is the guy that don't miss any games. Demario Davis is the head button, hard uh, nose linebacker that get us sync that attitude and that ferocity. Uh, not saying that they lack, but a guy like Demario Davis is definitely with the Saints, definitely with the Saints uh, really needed. Uh, to solidify his ability to, to occupy that position and lock that position down where, where you don't have rotating linebackers coming in and out like we had last year due to injury. You know, we had guys circulating and we lost uh, uh, A.J. Klein. We lose, uh, um, you know, uh, we lost some of our starting captain linebackers and great players like Craig Robinson had to come in. Man, Ty Teo had to come in and do some stuff. And I just love what the Saints did in that depth situation. Uh, it was totally just terrific and much kudos, big ups to the Saints. And uh, that's going to do it on our show today, uh, episode 197 of the Sports Coma OTA, week number two, of course, week number three coming up. For all your Saints news, you can join us here at the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guy. Like I said, join our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, t- Tumblr, or whatever. We out there. Look at the social media uh, description boxes in the, in the description section to join us on our social media. Also, go give our sponsors at Posh Lifestyle some play. And if you like the show, 
support, share with your friends, tell your people about it. And if you want to help the platform, go to Patreon, www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network to donate. That's right, to donate to help us out uh, <laughs> to, to, to two more things. Can't say that enough. But anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us. Right on, on the podcast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Hi. <laughs>